I'm a Wilmington native, born and born in Wilmington, uh, raised in the city, graduated from uh, Slazy Adams School in 1954, and um, spent, uh, aside from being away in medical school and college, basically spent my entire life here in, here in Delaware. I entered into practice in 1968 at what was then the Wilmington Medical Center, and I've been on the staff uh, since that time. My specialty is physical medicine and rehabilitation, and I remain in active practice uh, almost 40 years now. I had, I had uh, cousins who were physicians, so there were probably, I was probably the third generation of physicians, though, um, though there was just one uh, locally, a cousin who practiced here in Delaware. So I knew most of my life that I probably wanted to be a doctor. My father was not a physician, but my mother had many friends who were wives of physicians. So I more or less was, uh, was raised uh, around a fair amount of medicine. And in some ways, as I was going through school, having almost a goal as to what you wanted to be uh, made it somewhat easier. Did my residency at the University of Pennsylvania, and there was a physiatrist in Wilmington at that time, the first physiatrist in Delaware, Arthur Heather. He was um, then the only, I think, the only physiatrist on the staff of the hospital. Heather was one of my early mentors and um, sort of guided me to come back to Wilmington to, uh, to uh, practice. So it was really uh, through him that um, I got my start here in Wilmington. Another mentor to me was Dr. Dean McEwen at the Alfred I. DuPont Hospital. I served part of my residency at DuPont and worked there with Dr. McEwen and Dr. Shams. And they also influenced me to come back to Wilmington. And in my early career, I was on the staff at the DuPont Hospital and uh, served there for, for many years as well as uh, with, at the Wilmington Medical Center and now at uh, Christiana. I was just finishing my internship then at Hahnemann and was drafted to go in the military and was going to go into probably a subspecialty of internal medicine. But my brother had an auto accident, closed head injury. And I watched his rehabilitation. Rehabilitation at that time was really an underserved specialty. I knew very little about it, but through a personal tragedy, I uh, became interested in the field and I've been practicing rehabilitation medicine since 1968. Exactly, World War I, um, there was really very little rehabilitation. There was some physical therapy, and more or less the soldiers who were injured went to rest homes uh, to, re to recuperate. But during World War II, the physical therapy, occupational speech therapies were really gaining a foothold, and physicians who really knew nothing about that at that time, started to watch as the physical therapists and speech therapists and occupational therapists worked with war injuries, brain injuries, amputees, and the field of rehabilitation, while it started back in the late 30s, really got its start during World War II. And the rehabilitation hospitals then uh, really started to come into being. As medical director at Pellport, it was probably in July of 2000, I mean July of 1996, but I started there as a private practitioner, fee-for-service basis. Pellport at that time was a 60-bed facility. And when I arrived there, it was really classified then as an extended care facility. Well, shortly after that, um, myself and the hospital administrator then, John Rockwell. We then applied for and were certified as a rehabilitation facility. And in those days, we had a number of ophthalmology patients. The early cataract patients were usually hospitalized for a period of weeks 
During this time, they were in a darkened room, could not move after cataract surgery. And probably 60 of those beds, 10 to 15, were ophthalmology patients who were undergoing no physical rehabilitation at all. So we gradually changed the hospital from a 60-bed extended care facility into a 60-bed rehab unit. It is now approximately at Wilmington Hospital a 38-bed rehabilitation facility. So many of the 60 beds were not really full rehab beds. We were probably using 40 as rehab beds. And so the facility now, which is started at Wilmington Hospital in 92, is now a uh, full rehabilitation hospital. But I really started the rehabilitation hospital in 69 and then went on through there as medical director and uh, eventually said moved in 92 to Wilmington Hospital. Well, in rehabilitation, we've seen really significant progress in the way uh, that the patients are now treated, particularly, particularly the stroke patients, some in some of the brain injury patients, with intensive uh, therapies and uh, really uh, therapies that are aimed specifically at the neurological deficits. So that field has made major advances. And, um, the therapies have made major advances. In the musculoskeletal area, we're doing things now that I never dreamed of doing when I first started the practice. And uh, advances there that have allowed for the conservative treatment and management of uh, cervical and lumbar disc problems, things we could treat only with therapy and medications. We're now doing things called interventional physiatry where we actually will do nerve blocks on involved nerves and um, can really um, keep the majority of our patients away from surgery. Yes, I first joined the Academy of Medicine in the early 70s and I was invited to join then by uh, Dr. Robert Flynn. So I joined the Academy back in the early 70s and um, became active uh, in the academy. I was a member for many years, but in the 90s became active, started on the board in the middle 90s, and then in 1998 was elected president of the academy. So I served as president uh, from April 98 through April of 2000. So a two-year term, which has continued to be the term as, as, a, as a president. With the Medical Society, I was president of the Medical Society in 78 and 79. So I have a long history of involvement with the Medical Society and always have been active medically. And I also have been active in the community. And I've always felt over the years that physicians should devote some of their uh, free time to community activities as well as to medicine because I think the two play off one and one another. When I came on in April of 68, Dr. Les Whitney, who was my immediate predecessor, um, said, if we don't do something, the Academy's probably going to die. We had at that time an executive director um, who really wasn't, uh, in our opinion, um, functioning as well as we thought he should be. And it took uh, a great deal of time and effort on my part, Dr. Whitney's part, Dr. Flynn, and Dr. Uh, Kuhn, and we eventually uh, were able to replace the executive director at that time um, with um, Judy Gavadis, who served uh, very well as the executive director. But the Academy was really in sorry shape, the building, was deteriorating. Our prime tenant, the Medical Society, was rather unhappy with their accommodations, and uh, they were considering they were considering moving. We looked first into, well, let's do some reno renovations, 
raise funds and renovate the Academy building, which is a historic building. And we actually went through the Historical Society and got approval for, for some renovations at the Academy. We had to be very careful in how we treated the outside of the building. And we're able to, to, able to, uh, to uh, do this. But then it started becoming apparent that things are no longer happening in Wilmington. And if the Academy doesn't do something, it's going to die. So then came up with the idea that maybe you should look in the Christiana site. And I approached then Dr. Charles Smith, who was then the president and CEO of, uh, at uh, Christiana. And started talking to Dr. Smith that, well, there's no real conference center at Christiana. And the Academy always has had a conference center and as was noted over the years as to where meetings occurred. But those meetings were further and further apart and there was an adequate meeting space here at Christiana. So approached Dr. Smith with the idea, well, maybe we should come and join forces and build a conference center at Christiana and have the Academy move to Christiana jointly run and sponsor a conference center, and merge the libraries. The two libraries were really functioning in a way at opposite ends. We were buying the same books, buying the same journals. We had a different clientele in a way, but uh, we were serving then the broad community and the Christiana was serving the physician community. We were serving both physicians and the, and the lay community. But the identities weren't that far apart. So we were able to successfully merge the libraries and were able to um, get through both our board and the board at Christiana the idea of a merger, the libraries joining and the move to Christiana. And that, of course, has occurred and currently, I believe, has been very successful. And really um, felt that um, that idea that moving here was probably the right, the right one. And I was joined by Dr. Cassells, Dr. Flynn, Dr. Whitney, Dr. Kuhn, who all felt that this move uh, was something that should be done. Dr. Kessner uh, was also deeply involved uh, with that. Well, I'm looking at this. But I believe the Academy now and this is under discussion, we really have to branch out into other than physicians. We should start looking at, uh, at uh, nursing, particularly as the nursing uh, profession has so grown in both um, what it does and in their prestige. Advanced nurse practitioners, family nurse practitioners, um, and nursing as is, is a, a wider and wider uh, field with a great deal of professionalism. So we should really start looking at nurses as we do now as colleagues. And the Academy should start looking in that direction as well. So that's, so that's one direction. And even going into uh, physician's assistance as another uh, area to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to investigate. So I see the scope of the Academy broadening as we, as we move into those areas. And um, the Academy really um, should be the primary source of education for both the community as well as, uh, as, well as with other organizations with both physicians and with, and with nurses. Sponsoring uh, seminars for the community as, as well as physicians. Well, the, um, particularly in the area of, of health education, um, diet, exercise, the things that um, we really uh, feel the public uh, we, can, we, we can really be of, be of help. Also acting as a resource for the physicians as we get more and more away from a physical book to the internet and to the vast resources there. The Academy really uh, has been uh, greatly involved with as we've come, become more and more uh, computerized with our with our medical edu education. 
So to continue to feel, if we had stayed in Wilmington, there probably would not be an Academy of Medicine today. And that the move to Christiana was really something that we had to do. It really be a source for what is valuable, timely, as well as accurate medical information. Of course, you hear all kinds of things through the, through, through the late press and the media. But we're interested in the headlines and the immediate news, news story. And I'll give you a little example. There was a recent article that appeared um, in the journal American Medical Association about exercise and obesity. And this rather well done article um, the conclusion was that an obese individual and a lean individual can get just as much cardio fitness out of exercise uh, by doing exercise. So if you're obese, it doesn't mean you should not exercise. Your heart is going to benefit. So that type of thing, giving that information to the public, symposiums and seminars that would show the public the benefit of exercise and fitness and you can have a big pot belly and still exercise and still benefit from the, from the exercise. So not to frustrate someone, gee, I'm 200 pounds overweight and I exercise and I'm going to have a heart attack. No, you should exercise because it's going to benefit your heart. So a lean person is going to get just as much out of that as an obese person and vice versa. So it's things like that I think we should be bringing out out to the public. I think what I would like to try to relay to uh, particularly my younger physicians is to really get involved. There's a great emphasis today leaving the office, spending time with your family at home, and I can understand that. But I do feel that physicians do have another obligation, and that is to their profession and doing things outside their own office practice as well as the community. It's a tough line to, line to walk, and we're seeing many young physicians who just are not involved as, as some, of, some of their older colleagues have been over the years.